morning and thank you for coming. Today's topic is what you need to know when a loved one passes. Now we're all going to experience this sometime in our life and there's some things you need to know and some things that will help you through that particular process. So that's what we're going to talk about today. First though, what do executors do? Who are the executors? Um, executors can be individuals, they can be a corporate entity, or you can have an administrator. Those are all people that can handle the overall estate. Now when we hear the word estate, we often think, well, you know, my mother, father didn't have a whole lot left. Well, an estate is every single thing a person ever owned. It's anything they owned, whether it's furniture, books, jewelry, bank accounts, a home, a car, animals, anything that was left that belonged to that individual human. So yes, there's always an estate to settle. If they had any income while they were alive, taxes always have to be done. Whether that income was virtually only their Social Security, there still has to be a final tax return done. So that's what an executor is in charge of. Now an administrator works the same as an executor. The only difference is the executor and the administrator work together. The administrator is in charge of the paperwork. The executor is the one virtually in charge that signs off on everything you do. The other thing we want to talk about is when you're looking at an estate administration, what are our steps? What has to be done? What's, what happens first? What happens last? And when? So that's kind of what we want to go through with you today. The first thing we want to look at is account registration. What happens to the accounts? Anything that is a joint tenants with rights of survivorship. There's joint tenants in common. And then there's individual ownership. How do we handle those? When you have a joint tenants with rights of survivorship, that person that is on the account with them is now sole owner. They have 100% vested left over that account. Typically you're looking at a husband and wife. Say the husband passes away, what is left in that account as a joint tenants with rights of survivorship then belongs to the wife. There is still the paperwork to go through, death certificate showing that one of the owners have passed and it now belongs to the successor owner solely. Joint tenants in the entirety is another story. You'll often find this on accounts that have children, the accounts that are two unrelated parties, a brother and sister, those kinds of things. That means that only 50% of that account or a third or any other divisor thereof, depending upon how many owners are on that account, that's their undivided interest. If they have a 50% joint tenants in the entirety account, and we'll use bank stock as an example, half of that worth goes to their estate. Now, the other person on that account can buy them out, but that's on down the road. So half of that worth is automatically included in their estate as cash value to the decedent. We also then look at accounts that are in the individual ownership themselves. That's where, again, the executor comes in and has to go through the process of showing that this person has passed away. Those funds go into an account in a state account in the decedent's name and then goes to the estate overall to pay final bills, taxes, etc.